In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, as our brother Charles has died with the Lord, so may he live with him in glory.
beginning from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all people. The web that is woven over all nations, he will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away, wipe away the tears from all faces. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth. For the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold our God, to whom we have looked to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. The word of the Lord. Children of God. 
not of its own accord, but because the one who subjected it in hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery and corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains, even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we await for adoption the redemption of our lives. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Well, with my tenor voice, the key was way too low, 
I touched the mic causing a momentary obnoxious feedback loop. And the whole thing was quite a hot mess. And at the end, Charlie, in his loving fashion, quit. Don't quit your day job. <laughs> of course, I wasn't as long as I thought it was hilarious. Now, experts in the music industry can wax eloquent of the contribution that Charlie made in the music industry, uh, as they have been since the time of hearing of his death and even before. Um, they can talk about the politics and circumstances of the business that left Charlie hidden from most. So I'm not going to quit my day job as I fulfill it this evening. <laughs> I came to know Charlie and the family through Charlie Jr. when I was trapped one of the Cabrini home for the elderly Cabrini sisters at the 67th Calum. And later I learned that the Gracies knew my religious order, the Mercedarians, long before I knew who the Mercedarians were. And in fact, Charlie and Joan had a bird bath in their backyard that was originally at the Monastery of Our Lady of Mercy, where I now live. As one of the friars did like it again and said, hey, you want to take it? It's kind of a funny way that God works. Knowing the Gracies has been a great blessing in my life, as I'm sure, I'm sure it is for everybody here. I found great joy in sharing Charlie's life and story with countless others. And at moments, I've been able to share in some of their joys and sorrows. And so in that, I consider myself extremely blessed by God. And so here we are this evening, a day that selfishly I hoped would not come. But in faith, a day that I know is one for which Charlie waited his whole life. Despite our sadness, I guarantee this was probably the best Christmas that Charlie ever had as he went back to God. And as I went to Mercy Fitzgerald Hospital this last December 4th to make sure that Charlie would not pass without receiving the sacraments, it was clear that at that moment he was keenly aware of the significance of that moment. He was having difficulty swallowing, so the nurse didn't want us to give him Holy Communion. So they gave him absolution, the apostolic pardon, the anointing of the sick, and then we waited for the nurse to leave. <laughs> <laughs> and when he left, I placed an oh so tiny piece of the sacred host in his mouth, we're seeking that way. The sacraments are huge. And certainly nobody wants, any Catholic does not want to die without the sacraments. And I said in his ear, Charlie, I'm placing a tiny piece of the Eucharist in your mouth. Do not try to swallow. Jesus will dissolve when he wants to. <laughs> and Charlie moaned in great relief as he received the Eucharist the presence of the Savior, body, blood, soul, and divinity, for potentially the last time here on earth. I know he had other visits with the priest later on, so I'm not sure if he received Holy Communion after that, but at least that day he wasn't going to die without the Eucharist. And as he moaned, I thought of those words of St. Paul that we heard uh, in the second reading today. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains, even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we await for adoption and redemption of our bodies. And that was the groan I heard that day from Trump as he awaited to return to his Lord. And as we heard in the first reading, our Lord was preparing for Charlie to lift the veil of this world and show him the greater reality beyond this earth. Behold our God to whom we look to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice, be glad that he has saved us. And I chose this particular gospel passage from the Gospel of Matthew, which is from the funeral ritual, for at least 
in my experience, I thought it fit the life that Charlie lived very well. So many have said it already, and I will repeat it in some fashion. Whether one encountered Charlie at a gig or the grocery store or pharmacy or at his home, Charlie and his entire family made you feel welcome. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. One might begin a stranger with Charlie, but they would not remain a stranger for very long. Sometimes, in the years of being like a slip, and you remember the person. And we'll just take a few things to remind you. And that gift lives on in his family. It lives on in the communion of saints. At the beginning of the Mass, we received Charlie's cremains ritually. The sprinkling of the holy water served as a reminder that the church is the whole of all Christians, and at baptism, Charlie was received into the body of Christ, the church through water and the Spirit. And, of course, it will be important in the near future to bury those remains and emphasize the dignity of the body from which they came, and to provide a place for all to go, remember Charlie, and pay their respects over the years. And the funeral mass itself is built with so many beautiful symbols of our faith. I chose today to wear the black vestments, which remind us that this death that we experience, the separation of body and soul, is not what it's meant to be, but is a result of sin. And although it is painful, it would be more painful were left on this divided earth for eternity. And so death, as sad as it is, is the first act of God's mercy. Of course, you will write a chapter then on resurrected life, which we look forward to. When our first parents sinned, chaos and conflict entered the human communion, and again, to live endlessly in this state would have been torture. So God permitted this death as an act of mercy. The Paschal candle that burns in the center uh, by the cremains reminds us of that ultimate act of mercy. Christ, the light of the world, who gives us a share in his victory over sin and death by virtue of our baptism. To share his victory, we too pass through death. The Paschal candle reminds us of the Easter vision, the night when we await the Lord's resurrection and when new light for the living and the dead is kindled. And in the new rite of baptism, the new Christian is given a candle lit from the Easter candle. In the old rite of baptism, which Charlie was baptized and baptized, was also given a lit candle as a sign of the light of Christ. We are meant to keep that light burning brightly with God's grace until he calls us home. Incense is used during the funeral mass as a symbol of our prayers for the deceased rising to our Lord. It is a symbol of farewell and sign of honor to the cremains of the deceased. And it also serves as a sign of our own purification. The cross placed on the cremains and the cross that is on the altar remind us that we as Christians were marked with the cross in baptism. And through Jesus' suffering on the cross, we are brought to his resurrection. And since the nascent days of the church, as is evidenced by writings in the catacombs, the living have offered prayers for the deceased. And so we offer our prayers for Charlie's purification as he returns to the Lord. If there is any purifications or imperfections that are not uh, totally purified while he was in this world, he completes that now with the help of our prayers. And if Charlie has already been totally purified in his face to face with God, he is not insulted by our prayers, but closely united to us in them, and he will ask the Lord to apply those prayers to other souls in need. And these prayers for him also help to purify us from any of our own imperfections and selfish tendencies. We thank the Lord this evening for the gift of Charlie's life, which was 
touched each of us in a unique way. And as he enters heaven, he shall be reunited with his loved ones that have gone before. Just imagine what a joy that must be. And finally, we can ask Charlie also to continue to pray for us, as he did in this world. His prayers for us now are even more powerful than when he was in this world. We pray that we will draw strength from our Lord's presence in the Eucharist as he did. We pray that we will always find strength and consolation through the intercession and protection of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And we pray that with the help of Charlie's prayers from the other side, the love of Christ will be found in us and continue to grow in us. So we seek to always do that which is pleasing to our Lord, recognizing God's presence in those around us. That day at Jimmy D's, when I went on stage for my not so memorable performance, I attempted to sing the song Happy Trails from the old Roy Rogers show. Now it may not be Charlie's song. But I do think the lyrics, perhaps, express the sentiments of many of us here. And I think it expresses the way, at least in my view, that Charlie approached each day. So Charlie, I'm not going to sing it, but I will recite it. And my apologies to everyone here. As once I recited the song, it's going to be running through your head for the rest of the Mass. I ask you to please try to control yourself and don't sing it until after Mass. That song from the old Roy Rogers song. Some trails are happy ones, others are blue. It's the way you ride the trail that counts. Here's a happy one for you. Happy trails to you until we meet again. Happy trails to you. Keep smiling until then. Who cares about the clouds when we're together? Just sing a song and bring the sunny weather. Happy trails to you until we meet. Please stay up. God, the Almighty Father, raised Christ his Son from the dead. With confidence we ask him to save all his people, living and dead. And we respond to each invocation, Lord, hear our prayer. For Charlie, when baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted to the company of the saints, we pray to the Lord, the Lord, hear our prayer. For our brother, who aids the body of Christ, the bread of life, that he may be raised up on the last day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family and friends of our brother Charlie, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our shelter and our strength, we listen in love to the cry of our people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed brothers and sisters, cleanse them of their sins, and grant them the fullness of redemption through Christ our Lord. 
Lord, Holy Father, all 
Almighty, eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal <coughs> dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Church. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, 
in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death he will to reconcile us to himself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on his constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, Lord, advance the peace and salvation of the whole world. We please confirm in faith and charity of the Church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Bishop, and his assistant bishops, the order bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family that we have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, Charles, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, and from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died to transform our holy body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters, too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word of my soul. Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our brother Charles may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Facebook, he said, 
tell Mr. Greasy Jr. that he's added 20,000 references in the last two days, eight days, uh, in social media alone. And I guess we'll have plenty of time to read through those over the uh, coming months, but the few that I have read are just incredible. And I'm very comforting, Mom. We need to get on social media because <laughs> yeah, that, that's our next step. My mom got a cell phone, so I got a smartphone this year. She's, really out of time, so she's just talking with Fidel, but she's really out of time, so I don't know. Sure. Um, Frank, by the way, played bass for my dad for 
number of years. A lot of the players are here. Uh, Ross Finley, um, Terry Portman. Is Dick Green here? Dick Green? I'm not sure. Who might even know? I think. Bobby Jackson. Bobby Jackson, of course, yes. All right, sorry, Bobby. Um, oh, we also have uh, Miss Dee Dee Sharp Witherspoon, who's with us tonight. One of my dad's late from Cameo Records. And two of the times, I'm with Burnett and Caesar Berger. Wonderful, wonderful men and ladies. And uh, we're just honored to have you here. We love My father loved the you very, very much. Um, outside of show business, you know, he's pretty much a homebody. He liked to eat pretzels and uh, potato chips and drink iced tea and Pepsi Cola and watch the movies with my mom down at the dinner. That was his joy, you know. He, he had his work, then he came home and uh, never aspired to much other than that. You know, my home was home. And uh, never got anything to see at the end of the business, although he loved it. Uh, many of you were asking, well, what happened to your dad, Charlie? What happened? Well, we learned this or something. Well, uh, April 23rd, April 24th, my father was booked on two oldies package shows. One at a nice old theater up in, in Wilkesburg, Pennsylvania, with Little Pink Marge, Chris Montez, and Brian Island, Dupree's, a few others. Wonderful show, a lot, a lot of fun. Um, and everything went well, a couple thousand people there. And then the next morning, we got up early and we drove to Long Island, New York, and we had their uh, concert at a high school performing arts center. Pretty much the same one of a few acts as well. And uh, again, a big crowd. I think Terry Van, if you've not got my records, you were there. Here you are, Terry Van, great lady. Uh, you were there. And he did well, and he was a little tired, but he did it before. And then the next day uh, was a travel day back to Pennsylvania. And then uh, came Tuesday, and my mother made us some homemade chicken soup, which he desired. And then uh, not long after that, he was feeling well. And we had to call the uh, EMTs to come and check him out. He passed out in the kitchen and had his blood pressure dropped really low. And they rushed him over to the Lincoln Home Hospital and they said that uh, he was positive for COVID. And uh, there was a terrible infection somewhere in the body. And he turned the next day and it was in his kidneys. He was on the borderline of sepsis. So he was in there about, I guess, two weeks. Came out, lost about 20, 25 pounds. Just a pale reflection of the man we saw just a few days earlier. And this went on through May. He made one other public appearance, I think in May for his birthday, and that was it. Um, never had the stamina to perform again. Um, and he had more infections. Every time he had one of these infections, he was weaker after each episode. And then, of course, you know, he came up uh, November and December. He had to put him in a Catholic nursing facility called Little Flower Man, not too far from your home in Pennsylvania. And they're wonderful there, by the way. If, you, if anybody wants to make a donation, my father's name, they get to go to Flower Manor in Alden. Uh, it's a wonderful place. It, it, you know, they made us comfortable. It made his passing easy for us. And uh, it was just unbelievable. So, highly recommended. Wonderful, wonderful place. So, we lost him on Friday, um, December 16th. We saw my dad do his last breath. He, was, he knew, he, you know, he did not want to live like that. He said that Father Matt was there, that I don't want to be feeding to, because I don't want to breathing machines and it comes down and I just let nature take its course and let me slip away. You know, my father was very stoic about that. He said, we all have our time, we all have our destiny, and mine will come, and we're going to have to learn to live with it, and know wherever I go. But, you know, of course, we're real about it. And, uh, you know, he was the light of our life. You know, we went to all of his shows. And my dad played in theaters and played festivals with thousands of people, but you know what? He didn't care. He loved the place so much he would play in a bar or a tavern or an Irish pub or a like 50 or 75 or 100 people just love to play. And I think when you realize that you're playing for them, that's really when I think he kind of sort of gave up the ghost and figured, well, you know, we, we had this, we had it for 86.7 years. That's pretty darn good. And for 64 of those years, he was married to a wonderful mother. And he uh, was a, a wonderful lady, as you know. And they went through some ups and some downs and, and stuck it out. God bless her. Great. And uh, my dad would say, hey, no matter what happens, as long as we stay together, that's the bottom line. We'll make it. We stick to anything. We keep our faith. And we stick together. We'll make it. We'll be okay. And then, of course, my father had the privilege of playing music for 71 years. He began when he was 15 years old. He made his first records in 1951. This is before Elvis had even set foot to a recording studio or Jerry McLewis or any of those guys. 
He was cutting records uh, in 51 and 52 for the Cadillac of England and the 20th century Gotham of England. And uh, experimenting with uh, you know, country blues and, and rhythm of blues and that kind of thing, which later became known as rock and roll four or five years later. Uh, as a matter of fact, though, th this is December 30th, right? On December 30th, 1956, that's 66 years ago, Butterfly was recorded by Father went down to Ringo Art Studios at 12th and Market at the time, so it Dee probably knows it, and, and cut Butterfly in 99 days with a very low and a day Apple uh, orchestra, a day Apple band. And uh, the record was released after the new year by March. It's the number one record in the country which launched the cameo label and really you know, put Philadelphia on the, on the pop music map as far as rock and roll is concerned. And the American dancing era and all the rest is, is history. Uh, and so that happened on this very night, December 30th, in, in 1956. Retro Arts, Larry King Sigma Sound, right? A lot more concerned here. So thank you for uh, being a part of our lives. The, the beauty is, my father, you know, all of you, we all became friends because of him and his music. You know, not only here, but even in a foreign country, but people. Right today, my, my father never went on Facebook. I said, Dad, I had a message from so and so in Bristol, a message from so and so in Paris. Oh, I'm going to give him my love to all my life. And my father never went on social media. I was a social media person. I would answer for him. And, you know, I would show him something. But he, um, he never got into that kind of thing. But when people would respond to me, it was just like you know, a lady at the Apple telling me how much she loved him because you know, he always had time to talk with her or sign something. Well, the same thing happened in Belgium or France or Finland or Italy. It was the same message coming through from a different culture, a different, a different nation, but the message is always the same. Kindness, giving time, you know, uh, humility. It's a beautiful thing. So, um, and those of you who have the chance to introduce him at shows, he would always say, no, we introduce him, like, keep it short. Don't make me speak, right? <laughs> he always, you know, announcements to bring me on because, you know, just want to get on with my thing and entertain the people. He lived to entertain the people. And then the bottom line was it wasn't even his idea. My grandfather had the aspirations to show business and wanted my dad to get into music so he could work at a, at a factory. My grandfather worked at Stetson Hats for many, many years, which is a terrible place to work in North Philadelphia. And, um, he said, you know, think out an instrument and make something of yourself. So you know, I'm going to play like a donkey, like I have all my life. And my dad said, I'm going to play that. He says, nah, you'll blow your brains out. Get a guitar. Get a guitar out of you. You'll be one man dead. You don't need anybody else. You know, the power was out. You can still entertain the people. Hey, great foresight. So we thank you again. And uh, we feel blessed. And uh, we love you all. And I hope, I hope everyone will, will continue to stay close to us. Interact with us, and we'll have to get together and find excuses to get together, make it happen. We won't have to add, but uh, we will have it. I, I, you know, he was such a powerful presence in my life. I, I've been crying, I have my moments, but I don't really feel like he's gone. I feel like he's still here because we've had him for so long. And uh, we're going to have our moments. Of course, Christmas was tough this year. My sister's birthday was Christmas Eve, and uh, we got through that. My, my Aunt Marina's here. My mother's sister, we lost my Uncle Bob from COVID last. December 13th, so both sisters are, you know, are mourning the losses of their, of their husbands a year apart. It's been a rough year for our families, and I know for many of yours too. So thank you so much. Love you. Father Matt, bless you. Thank you for being a part of our lives, and uh, let's pray for each other.
Please stand. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother Charlie. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Let us go in peace.